Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 368. Attention gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Pursuing your dream can be fun. Whether you have an established business or are looking to start one now, you are in the right place. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, helping you turn your skill into a flourishing business. Join us for an episode packed full of invaluable guidance, resources, and the support you need to grow your gift biz. Here is your host, gift biz gal, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and today in particular, I am thrilled that you're here. This is the day that you're going to get an inside peek into our very first gift biz bash. What's a bash? If you're new here, hold tight. You'll experience it in just a few minutes. But first, I want to remind you that doing events like craft shows and farmers markets offers great photo and posting opportunities for social media. I bring this up because you've told me you're discouraged when you don't see any of the time and effort you put into social media moving the needle on your sales. Putting in more time posting in the same way isn't going to magically bring you results. You need to change the way you're posting and what you're posting. You don't need to put in more work. You need to put in the right work. That's when things will change. If you need some help with this, I've got you covered with the Content for Makers program. Content for Makers will enlighten you as to why your social media activities aren't converting into sales. It will also show you how to put less time in and start seeing activity that will increase your sales. Just imagine a day where you know exactly what to post and to get it done in five minutes or less. Then you can spend your time interacting with potential customers, deepening relationships with those you already know, too. And it builds upon itself naturally. Yes, this is possible. Content for Makers includes a step-by-step strategy to formulating your unique plan based on your business and your products. Then you'll have 375 social media prompts over a full year of ideas. Along with the 375 prompts come 375 image suggestions, so you're not left hanging on the creative. These prompts and image suggestions can be used for all platforms and all types of posting. Images, live streaming, reels, even email direction. There's more to content for makers, too. To see all the details, just jump over to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash content for makers. But honestly, at only $27, it's a no brainer. Why carry on posting as you've been doing all along, expecting different results? Sign up for Content for Makers now and see the transformation of your posting experience change before your very eyes. Giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash content for makers. Ready and waiting for your immediate access right now. Moving into today's topic, I'm going to share with you what may very well be a huge source of insight into where you are in your business journey and why you might be struggling right now as you try and grow. I call this the five gift biz growth stages. And as I go through them, you'll be able to easily identify which stage you're in. The magic here is that I'll also tell you exactly what steps you should take to move on to the next stage. No more chasing shiny objects or trying to do all the things at one time. Easy does it, step by step, from one stage to another. You get to take a deep breath and enjoy the process versus feeling like you're always behind. Sound good? Then let's get going. Welcome to the first Gift Biz Bash. I'm so excited about doing these bashes because one of the things I always hear is, how do I get more eyeballs on my business? How do I get the word out about what I'm doing? And nobody... I don't care if you're just starting or have been in business for a while. Nobody feels like they have this all figured out. Everyone is constantly looking for new ways to attract visibility, which of course leads to new customers. I'll start out by presenting a topic. 
Today we'll be covering my five gift biz growth stages. And then we get into the showcases, which I'll provide more detail on later. As we move forward, these trainings are going to be about 10 minutes or so. But this one today is going to be just a tad longer because of the content. To kick it off, let's just go ahead and dive in. The five gift biz growth stages. This outlines the evolution of a handmade product business and has been confirmed and reinforced over the time that I've worked with so many of you. There are very specific things happening internally and externally for you during each of these stages. Plus, this structure provides steps that you can take to get from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. As I go through these, I think you'll be able to easily identify which stage you're in and you'll get insight into where you can go from here. Plus, you'll see that you're not alone in your business growth experiences. These stages are a natural progression, but one of these stages, stage two, often gets missed. The very first stage of business growth I've termed bizability. So that's like visibility, but with a B, bizability. At this point, you wouldn't have started yet, but you're thinking about the possibilities. Maybe a friend or family member has said, oh gosh, what you make is so beautiful. You should start a business. Perhaps it hadn't even been on your radar, but all of a sudden, one little sentence and you're like, oh, maybe. But then when you seriously start thinking, it gets kind of scary. You have no clue what to do. When people ask to join Gift Biz Breeze, my Facebook group, one question I ask is, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? People who are beginners say things like, I don't know what to do to start, or I don't want to start wrong. All these fears come up. Many times in this stage, people are concerned and think, how can I possibly start a business? I don't have any business education. Yet that contrasts with looking out into the world and seeing others who are doing it. So there's an element of hope there too. Action steps if you're in this stage, visibility, are first to think through what a business would look like that you could feel good about and would fit into your life. It's the dreaming stage, but you can begin to start putting some detail to what this could look like for you. Then make a commitment to yourself that you're going to start because you can go on for years saying you're gonna start a business and never ever get around to it. You just kick the can down the road again and again. So put a date on the calendar and commit to yourself that you deserve the right to pursue this idea and then stay true to this agreement that you've made to yourself. The other thing to help with this is to tell three people of your intentions. A friend, coworker, family member, I don't care who, say it out loud to three people, maybe even your dog. There's magic in putting spoken words to your plans. You're much more likely to follow through when you've told others. And like with all things, one of the hardest parts is just to start. After you do this, I want you to decide on two products you think you'd like to sell. Let's face it, one of the characteristics of a maker is you have so much creative talent, you can make a lot of things. Pick only two, all right, three if you really have to, products that you think you could sell. And then what I want you to do is gift them to two people. Now, if someone has said that they would pay you for them, go ahead and do that money exchange, by all means. Maybe you've already done this, but I'm saying gift or run a transaction with two people. What this does is it starts to build emotional momentum. You'll get feedback about your products and the feel of being in business. This is all stage one. Stage number two is validation. I'd say of all women I work with, less than 5% ever even do this step. It's a time of testing and discovery, narrowing in on what product will actually sell. 
You're strategically finding a market and then tweaking or perfecting your product based on what you learn. This is also the stage, validation, where you'll be presenting your product for the very first time to an unknown audience. It can be exciting, but also very anxiety provoking because you're putting yourself out there. The action steps during this stage are to sign up and attend one or two shows, smaller in-person shows. They can be a farmer's market, a craft fair, or a small church bazaar. You're really not establishing your business yet, but you're testing and seeing who likes your product, which products sell more than others, and within those products that are selling, which sizes, scents, or designs are the most popular. You see, what you're doing here is validating that the product you're planning to put out into the world actually has a market where people will truly exchange money for your product. You know how it is. People will tell you your products are beautiful or so useful or delicious, but they might not be willing to pay money for it. So here's where you confirm that you can start a business around what you make. It's really important to get this validation before you go any further. This is why people will say, I participated in a craft show and nobody bought any of my products. They never ran through the validation stage to truly narrow in on the right products. You have to be realistic about whether you have a market, which is what happens in this second stage. It's where you begin to understand who's interested in your product. You may think you know, but confirmation sets you up for success. All of this should be done in the beginning, surprisingly, before you even start your business. And again, as I've already said, somewhere between two and 5% of people ever run through this stage, which is why we have such a high close rate on businesses. Okay, moving on to stage three. I call this make it real. It's where you officially start your business. You add in the professional structure that you need to have a solid foundation on which to grow your business. Notice we're already at stage three. Fear resurfaces here. It comes up again now because it's time to make an investment personally and financially into your new business. It's also a time when you start questioning your current ways. Because if now you're really going to do this, you'll rethink the manual systems you have in place to allow for future growth. Action steps when you're in this stage? One is to formalize your business name because now's the time to finally decide on this. Now, it may sound way late in the game, right? Because most people, when you start thinking about a business, you say, oh, I'm gonna start a business. What am I gonna name it? Well, what if you see that the product that you thought you were going to sell isn't the one that people are willing to buy? Then you change your primary product and you're stuck with a name that doesn't match the product that you're now selling. I see this a lot. That's why it's best to test the market as we discussed in stage two and formalize everything in stage three. Here in Make It Real, you'll register your business as a sole proprietor or LLC, which of course is always my call. You'll open a business bank account, really important to keep your personal and business finances separate. You'll also get into fun things like determining your brand colors and creating your logo. You add in some type of accounting system, not just an Excel spreadsheet, and right here is also where you work up to having multiple sales channels. By that I mean you might have an Etsy shop and also do in-person sales events. Or you might focus on local networking because your target audience is small business owners who offer services and need your product for client prospecting, relationship building, and retention. But what I want you to think of is two different ways where you can sell your product. Remember, each sales channel has a unique audience. So by adding additional channels, you're broadening your net of opportunity. Even online sales platforms attract different people. Etsy has a different audience than Amazon Handmade. 
than those who come directly to your website if you plan on having that up and running at this point. Having more than one way to attract sales is how you can bring in business faster. This is all in Make It Real, Stage 3. Here is also when you start buying wholesale. Things you're buying and including in your product or its packaging instead of buying at retail prices. If you're a baker and going to the local grocer for flour, eggs, and sugar, now's the time to start buying in bulk. If you make jewelry, you begin to order larger quantities of beads, clasps, even packaging that you use for display. Buying wholesale, of course, allows you to increase your profit margin and have money to pay yourself and invest back into your growing business. Now, of course, you're not going to convert everything over to wholesale right away, but this is where you get started in stage three. Now we're going to jump over to stage four, which is up the game. Here you begin to experience consistency with the business. You're starting to see sales steadily come in. You know who your customer is. You've buttoned down your processes and you're understanding your sales cycles. Probably for all of us, Christmas is a huge time of year for selling. But other times too. Specific products naturally align themselves with certain holidays, but there is variation even within an industry. Take gift baskets. Some gift basket businesses do great at Easter and Mother's Day. Some don't. Over time and based on your customer focus, you'll get a real handle on your specific trends. Your desire in this fourth stage is to grow. You want more sales. This is where you stretch for that revenue number you've had in your head and watch month over month and year over year numbers. But it gets overwhelming and you're juggling everything now as you're growing. Because if you're making and you're selling and you're promoting and you're doing the books, all of a sudden you've got a lot of plates in the air. Anxiety increases and the balance of it all is tipping. You may also in this stage be tempted to diversify your product line. And I'm going to say, putting my foot down, <laughs> you want to resist that. By diversifying, I mean, let's say you sell candles and now you think, that's great, but since I want to grow, I'm also going to sell knitted baby booties. I love making those. Or some other product that doesn't even relate to what you already have out there. What I don't mean here is, not extending a line of what you already sell within limits. But I don't want you to get out of what you're becoming known for, what you're being recognized as an expert in. There's the temptation here to do that because you think, well, I can make more money because I'll have a larger variety of products to offer. No, you want to stay tight and solid with the products you currently make and focus on ramping up sales there. Steps you're taking in this stage include creating your own website. Even if you're on Etsy or similar online platforms, you don't have control there. Having your own website is always the goal, a place where you aren't at the mercy of others' imposed rules or rates. In this stage, you should be collecting email addresses and have a marketing strategy in place that you're using regularly. You have a structure and a plan and focus on specific social media platforms that are right for you. This all happens in stage four. You build a team now too. You become a boss of people because you simply can't do it all yourself. Maybe you're starting to think about wholesale or even a physical location of your own. Yes, brick and mortar is still a thing. I would say between 60 and 70% of all businesses are in these two stages, three and four, and many stay stuck here permanently. And that's where your business starts to grind. You don't have everything in place and you start to make corrective changes, but the changes that you make don't fit with what you're currently doing. And then your audience gets confused, as I was talking about with diversifying before. And sometimes you flip back and forth between these stages too. Finally, we get to stage five called keep it coming. 
This stage is all about sustainability in relation to economic growth potential, keeping your business open and profitable. You've got consistent and reliable sales coming in. You've probably been in business now for a number of years, and you've seen your role change. You've always been a visionary, but now you're a visionary leading a team. Your role has changed from being the primary maker to being the manager of the people who are the makers. Things that can happen during this stage, burnout, boredom, you've done this for so long, you're thinking about the future and what that looks like. Am I going to be doing just more of the same? And do I like and want to do this anymore? Because you've been in it for a while. On the good side, you've got reliable systems in place and sales are flowing in. The other thing that you can see as a characteristic of this stage is you've become the problem solver for others who are running the business. They're coming to you to ask answers to the things that they're putting in place. Your role has changed. Action steps to take here are watching the market to make sure that your product is still relevant. As an example we can all relate to here, let's talk about face masks. Who even sold face masks a couple years ago? Now they're everywhere. But moving forward, if you run a business only selling face masks, it will be in trouble. Same thing happens for other businesses and products. Think of Blockbuster and VHS tapes, or Apple now discontinuing the iPod, given our phone now provides all that we need there. If you're not watching what's going on in the market, it can creep up on you really easily, and your product loses its relevancy to our life. Be careful of that. Remember, you're the visionary. In this stage, you also want to find new and exciting sales opportunities to re-energize yourself and bring renewed life to the business. Because just as you can get tired of the same old, same old, your customers can get tired too, if you're not bringing new things to the table. This is the place where you can extend your product line because now you're solidly entrenched and people know you for something. You have a strong reputation. So you're able to take that really loyal following and a portion of them will be interested and move into supporting other products with you. And another thing you might do here is to start thinking, well, if I decided not to continue at some point, what would happen to the business? Who would take over? Someone in the family? Or do I sell? Not that you're doing it tomorrow, but you start thinking about what that would look like and start putting things in place for it to happen. I'd say in the evolution of handmade businesses, about 10% ever get to this stage where they're really thinking about the future and keep excitement going. Okay, there you have it. To summarize the five stages, we've got Visibility, starting with the idea and what it could be. Validation, testing and discovering what the market wants in relation to your products and tweaking them accordingly so you're assured your product will sell. Stage three, make it real. Everything about getting your business out to the public in a legal and official way and building your brand. Then comes up the game, building on those sales so you get consistency and reliability. And finally, keep it coming. You've got all your systems in place. Your role has changed. How do you continue to stay relevant? Keep excitement that draws people back to your business. And then planning for what will happen moving into the future. This is the life cycle and the stages of growing a handmade product business. Does anybody want to unmute and tell me where you are, where you see yourself? Go ahead, Ellen. I <laughs> nice to meet you, by the way, Sue. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. I'm buddy. thrilled that you showed up. I love that. <laughs> My buddy is here, too. Um, so That's okay. We're keeping it real. Um, I definitely, for, for sure, I have a couple of different ways that I sell, a couple of income streams. I have one um, helper who comes over to help me clean my tumblers and package them and all of that good stuff. Sales are pretty consistent, and of course, I would love to have more. <laughs> Definitely growth, you know, always yearning for that growth. But I feel like I have a, a great seed planted, 
And now I'm starting to see the, the fruits of the growth, but it is bringing a tad of anxiety because I am kind of doing all of the things. <laughs> Perfect. Well, then, yeah. And so that falls within what I talk about there, that thinking of ways that you can get some of that off of you, because, you know, I think we all feel like we're super women and we can just carry on forever, but that's going to lead us to either getting sick, hurt, or discouraged, you know? Right. So, and it's such a relief. I, I know anyone can vouch if anyone's brought on help, it's such a big obstacle. It's a big fence to yeah. jump, it feels like. But once you do, it's like, why didn't I do this sooner? You know, and right. it can be even something little, you know? Yeah, for so, sure. Thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, I have been watching your products and seeing. So I like that you're putting yourself in that spot. That makes sense to me. Cassie, were you going to say something? Sure, definitely for me as well. I feel like I'm grinding my wheels all the time because I do have a full-time job outside of the business. And so it's hard to grow. It, I'm just in that middle point where it's, I either need to take the leap and grow big or just keep grinding away with my evenings and weekends. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Wendy. Yeah. I think I also am in four. Um, I have multiple places where I'm selling things. I do the events around the holidays. I'm online. I'm selling in marketplaces. But I think I don't have certain things that are lined up that need to support that kind of growth. I've got to get my email marketing system going. I don't have a formalized accounting system. I am still on spreadsheets, you know. So I think there's all these like little bits and pieces of things that need to get put into place to help me kind of get through to those next stages. Yeah. And that's where I say that stage three and stage four sometimes overlap and especially now because I'm introducing these stages that this can be a guideline for people who are starting so Wendy this could have been you like a year or two ago maybe yeah. but you know they do go over each other because it's usually when you start the business you think oh my gosh I need an email list and oh my gosh what about my logo like you think of all the things right in the beginning this way it gives some clarity to which stage are you in here's what you should do now that helps you move to the next stage. Here's what you do now. But it's a more orderly way of doing things, which makes everything a lot calmer than all these things that you think you need to do right out of the shoot, you know? Yeah. All right, let's see how we're doing on time. I think the best thing for us to do right now would be to move into the showcases. Here's how this is going to go down. Everyone gets a chance to talk. I'm suggesting that we take about a minute and a half based on who's here, up to two minutes, you know, potentially. I'm trying to keep these somewhere around 45 minutes or so, which is why spots are limited to even join the bash. And so here's what I want you to do. Tell me your name and your business. And if it's not automatically obvious what your product is, and then tell us something you have going on. If you have a special promotion coming up, even locally, like if you're at a craft show in a local area, go ahead and share it because we have listeners from everywhere across the country. So you're going to be able to expose them to that. And they may not even know that there's a show right in their area. And then you tell them to come and see you, of course. So you can do anything like that. If you're looking for a collaboration with another maker, Perhaps you do jewelry and you were thinking for Mother's Day, it would be really fun to pair jewelry with another product where you guys actually bring two products together and sell to both your audiences. Collaborations like that or going on lives or whatever it is that you're searching for, you can call that out too. And then finally, tell us where online people can connect with you further, whether it's your website, whether it's an email, a social media platform, whatever it is, okay? So three things, what your company is, anything you have special going on right now, and then where people can go to find out more. And Kim, I'm going to make you the star of the show to oh, kick no. off the whole bash, like everything. How about that? Perfect. I wish I had confetti. Yay. <laughs> if I was on my other app right now, I would be able to do that, yeah. but not here. <laughs> Take it away. Yay. So I, it's so weird to see my background, not my kitchen. I'm in my living room, <laughs> but I'm Kim from Kim's Cottage Confections. I have a brick and mortar bake shop 
located in a tiny little town in Middlefield, Connecticut. And right now we are focused on Easter because that is going to be within two weeks. So we have clients every day coming in for Easter products, simultaneously kicking off a very busy wedding season. So, so yeah, um, so when when this goes live, Easter will be over. Okay. Right. So we'll right. be talking. So Mother's Day then we'll yeah. be moving into Mother's Day promotion pro, uh, promotions, but really kicking off a very very busy wedding season. It seems like everything that was scaled down or postponed from 2020 and 2021 is really coming to fruition in 2022. So we are ready to kick off a big big year. And, you know, you could find me Instagram, Kim's Cottage Confections. We post, try to post every day, Facebook, similar. And my email is Kim at Kim's Cottage Confections.com. Perfect. All right. Anita, why don't you go next? Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Anita Hausman, and I am from the Hershey Gifting Company. Formerly Treasure Touch Promotions and Gifts, we have just transitioned over to our new name, as of January 1st, and we are a gifting and specialty company specializing in custom printed ribbon. So for the next couple of months, we are really, I'm really focusing on working with other businesses to get them branded, whether they want to brand their product or offer, we're moving into the, like Kim, the Mother's Day graduation prom season which is very busy for me with ribbons. But also, this is a great time for me to work with small businesses and even companies that want to brand themselves in an affordable way. So using ribbon and other things. We do t-shirts, apparel, beyond the pens and promotional items that are out there that you often see at trade shows. We are transitioning over to our new website today, actually. It moved over to a new uh, platform, and you can find me at the Hershey Gifting Co. on the website, Facebook, or you can email me directly at anita at the Hershey Gifting Co.com. Wonderful. Okay, let's see, Cassie. I can unmute myself. <laughs> My name is Cassie Menchofer of Cassie's Country Cupboard, and I create better for you meal helpers such as soup mixes, baking mixes, spice blends, that sort of thing to help you get dinner on the table without losing your sanity. And I am looking for referrals to all of your friends who might be also trying to start a business like that, any sort of dry mix goods. And I do have capacity where I can co-pack for them at very low minimum quantities. And you can find me online at www.cassiescountrycupboard.com. Perfect. Wonderful, Cassie. Wendy, you're up. Hi, I am Wendy. I am the owner and creator of Mystic Moon Soapworks. And I handcraft soaps and lotions and all kinds of bath and body products um, in my home here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, including a men's line of beard care and beard washes and lotions. I am gearing up for some special... Uh, collaborations I'm going to be doing with the LGBTQ community for Pride Month. So I'm going to have a special line of soaps and there will be a contribution that we're working on to help support homeless LGBTQ populations. So I'm really excited about that collaboration and that'll be launching in June. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, but my website is mysticmoonsoapworks.com. Wonderful. Uh, Joyce. Oh, hi. Hi. I am Joyce of Joyce and Baskets. I have a, I would say, a corporate gifting boutique. I've changed the name to a corporate gifting boutique. And I've got a lot of exciting things going on and having growing pains and all that good stuff. But in the next couple of months, I have a major undertaking that I am revamping, redoing, and restructuring the entire website designs and all so that is a major continuing edu continuing project for like forever and a day so what do you off what do you offer so everyone who's listening to this podcast what could they come to you to get what do you offer i offer custom gifting 
for any special occasions. If you're having uh, events, we do events. We do printed ribbon as well. We do personalized gifting tags. My business basically circles around local hand delivery, what we ship. And so we're getting into a brand new baby line, which I'm excited about that. I have brand new baby vendors coming up. So I'm excited to put something together. I think if Amy said, either you said, sometime after a while in business, after being in business for quite a while, you kind of get tired of seeing the same old things and you want to just like throw in the towel. So I'm trying to refresh and revamp you know, myself here. Okay, and where can people find you, Joyce? You can find me on, I'm really on Instagram more than anything else, so it's at Joyce's Baskets on Instagram, but my Facebook page is still the same, Joyce's Baskets, you can find me there, or if you want to hit me up and uh, pick my brain for whatever reason, or you may have something that you think that will go good with my products that I have already, uh, hit me up and send me an email at Joyce at Joyce's Baskets.com. And where are you in the country since you deliver mostly local? Where are you? Sunshine State of South Florida, Miami, Florida. There you go. All right, LaShawn, you're up. Hello, I am LaShawn Barnes, and I am the owner of Forever Mona Lisa. Forever Mona Lisa is an eclectic brand of handmade jewelry, necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and made of various semi-precious stones, metals, and wood and bone. And I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have a website, which is Forever Mona Lisa. I am also on Instagram, Forever Mona Lisa. And if you're listening to this podcast, it'll be around Mother's Day or whenever you hear it, you can use promo code BASH, B-A-S-H, for a 10% discount off your purchase at the website at Forever Mona Lisa. LaShawn, you've upped the game with a promo code. I'm so proud of you. I love that. I never even thought of that. <laughs> Leave it to you. Ellen, what you got for us? Hi, guys. Okay, so I'm Ellen Montoya. I'm in the, sh- the Sunshine State too, Joy. <laughs> so I'm the owner of Emory Tumblers. I make these gorgeous glitter tumblers. I also make laser engraved tumblers and sublimation tumblers. And I also have another uh, part time business where I teach other women how to make them both through private and online instruction. So I can help you with custom orders. We have Mother's Day coming up, end of the year gifts, a lot of coaching gifts, everything for the end of the year coming up. And if you're looking to learn to make tumblers, I can teach you right in my workshop here. I am in the Lithia, Florida area. Or I have an online coaching community as well. Coming up, I have a couple of local events. May 1st, I'll be in Fishhawk, which is Lithia, Florida. May 8th, I will be over in Brand, I'm sorry, White Oak Cottage, which is in Lithia, Florida. And I have another show June 4th back in Fishhawk. And LaShawn, be bash 15. (laughs) 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 If you mention um, this, the podcast come out and see me and I'd be happy to extend 15 percent off a tumbler for you and I have a website where you can find me and I'm going to offer that on my website as well bash15 you can use that at emarytumblers.com love it okay Amy take us home girlfriend okay I'm Amy Hughes. I'm the owner and managing partner of Marshmallow MBA. We are a gourmet marshmallow company based in York County, Pennsylvania, and we're manufacturing marshmallows for the retail and wholesale customers. Trying to think how to frame this. I have no special events coming up. However, (laughs) and it's only because we have reduced the number of events that we're doing in person. But what we do have is collaborations ongoing with two Breeze members. One for Mother's Day. We're collaborating with Lydia Cox. She makes uh, handmade jewelry for us. We have a honey-based marshmallow that has no corn syrup in it. And we're partnered with Lydia for Mother's Day. We're doing a Be Kind and Be Sweet marshmallow box. So you'll be able to see that gift box up online within the next two weeks. And we're also ongoing with our collaborations with Anita over with the Hershey Gifting Company because we're basically neighbors. Wendy, I think we're a neighbor to you as well, which is exciting to know. And we will be at Lancaster Pride this year. Anita is helping us with a number of 
custom printed ribbons, not only for the gift boxes, but also for the Harrisburg Dessert Festival, which is coming up on July 16th in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You can find more information about Marshmallow MBA at marshmallowmba.com. And you can reach us at info at marshmallowmba.com. And we're available at Marshmallow MBA across all social media because, you know, we're only so creative. Perfect. I think that's a best practice is a single name everywhere makes things so much easier. And you just rebranded and we just did a podcast. It's about four weeks back now, but you can find it, Amy with Marshmallow MBA, all about the rebranding and pivoting of her customers. She found that, you know, it was a different customer than what she thought when she started out. So it's a great example of of what we talk about, just the evolution through the stages and great examples of collaborations to taking advantage of this opportunity with discount codes, all of those types of things. So also not only are you listening to the people who are talking and what they have going on, but think of some of these ideas for yourself too. Like some of the collaborations that Amy's doing, does that spark an idea for you? Not copying exactly what other people here are doing, but what other ideas get ignited to you because of things that you're hearing through these showcases. That's another way that you can use this. And as long as you're a maker of a handmade product, you are welcome to come on as a participant in this bash. This is the very first one that we've done. I'm planning on doing them twice a month. The platform is going to be just like we talked about. 10 minutes, I'm going to be talking about some type of a point more in a training mode a little bit of Q&A on the topic that I talked about, and then we're doing showcases. The showcases are limited because if I have too many people in, as you can imagine, it could just go on and on and on and on and on. So I have to limit how many people. So if you're interested, make sure to sign up right away. You can do so at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. You can sign up for one. You can sign up for all if you want to guarantee your spot. And I think, Amy, you've already signed up for several, right? Yeah, because really it is limited. When I get to that limit point, you can't get in anymore. So if you're interested, I would love to have other people join us. And again, I just gave you the link, giftbizunwrap.com forward slash bash. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining in. Those of you who are here live, just hold tight. I'm going to end the recording and then we'll chat for just one more minute. Take care, and I will catch, hopefully, many of you at the next bash. Before you move on to your next activity today, make sure to get your name on the list for at least one Gift Biz Bash. You can see the dates and times for upcoming sessions and get signed up over at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. And if you're enjoying the podcast and would like to show support, a rating and review would be wonderful. It helps spread the word about the show, too. There's also another way for you to get something tangible in return for your support. Visit my merch shop for a wide variety of inspirational items, like mugs, journals, water bottles, and more, featuring logos, images, and also quotes to inspire you throughout your day makes a great gift too. And we just added some new products for the season. Turnaround is quick and the quality is top notch. Nothing but the best for you. Take a look at all the options at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash shop. All proceeds from these purchases helps me offset the costs of producing this show. And now be safe and well And I'll see you again next time for the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other. I've got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product, to show what you're working on for the week to get reaction from other people and just for fun because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making. My favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? 
If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze today.